What is going on, everybody? How about it? Fall is coming. Pretty crazy. Year went by uh, super, super quick. and uh, But the fishing's good again, so I won't complain. Um, so some of you may have seen the post. Um, there was uh, kind of asked... Uh, just about having four patterns for the fall. Um, if you could only have four kind of thing. Hey, welcome in. Um, and so there's a lot of, you know, staple stuff that you want to have. But I'm not saying these are the only four that you need to have. Uh, but if you, you know, wanted to make a bet uh, at who would, you know, catch the most fish if you know, me and a bunch of my buddies could only pick four patterns uh, to fish for the fall. So these would be our choice. Um, they are all pretty much staple foods, um, except for the first one. And it also happens to be the most simple. Uh, so, what's up, Justin? Uh... I don't know about this light action. It kind of sucks a little bit, doesn't it? Uh, whatever. So anyhow, uh, I'm totally not prepared. Might have had a after work nap before this. <clears throat> um, so yeah, stoked. I got uh, four days of fishing in front of me here. So, um, these patterns right now, you can still find some bugs hatching. Uh, so that's one thing to obviously consider these, when I'm tying these, I'm kind of thinking for, you know, when the hatches are done, uh, you know, a few more weeks from now, right up until ice up, these are going to kind of crank on them. So, uh, size 10, Diachi 1120, um, 764th tungsten chartreuse speed and this is uh it's the second one i think you guessed it yep we're tying a blob now i know guys do all kinds of things with these and whatever i've been this is the og uh 15 millimeter gel core fritz from this is what boobies started to get tied with and one of the first kind of popular uk materials um that i come across and i've ne have never changed from it so it's fluorescent sunburst i've got uh textream a dot fluorescent orange thread and i just peel back some of the um fibers and expose the cord and then you get a nice tight tie-in and if you tie these things right they'll last you an entire season <clears throat> and then just wrap it up so this stuff you can pack pretty tight if you just kind of pull back treat it almost like a hackle and then make sure to set your wraps too. So once you, you know, a wrap or two, and then really snug down. And then a wrap or two, and then crank down. <clears throat> but I don't put any flash out the back. I don't, uh, nothing like that. It's all just the hook, the bead, and the fritz.
Now, these are, you know, some love them, some hate them. Hate them. Um, but at the end of the day, they catch fish. Yes, wetting them down makes it easier to tie them off, too. I've tied enough of them now where I got them pretty dialed. And then this orange thread, I just build up a little collar right behind the bead. And we're done here. So uh, that's it. I don't tie them in different sizes. I don't tie them in different variations. Um, you can get them in different colors, of course. Uh, but that thing there, if they ain't eat, eating anything uh, else, they'll usually eat one of those. Uh, it's a 11.20 Daiichi. <clears throat> yeah, so I'm going to tie two. So uh, I did say that I would give this stuff away. So I've got four patterns I'm tying two of. And then I've got four crawnies sitting around. Uh, somewhere pretty close. I'll throw those in to make it a dozen. And, uh, yeah, it's a size 10. And, uh, yeah, if you stick around, if you're here at the end, then, uh, you know how it works. I scroll through the comments, stop my finger on a winner, and that's it. So, if you have any questions on how to fish these or, or whatever it might be, uh, let me know. I like to move them. Um either you can rip these things over drop-offs uh, so if you're anchored in the shallows you can cast out to the deep water with a sinker but just start stripping right away uh, anywhere you see fish rising uh, you can usually get them moving one of these <clears throat> Yeah, so, I mean, lots of people will hang them. Nothing wrong with that either. Um, I will do it sometimes. But moving it certainly seems to uh, be the most productive. Even late, late season, they still seem to chase these things. <clears throat> Uh, no, I don't really change much with this stuff. Um, I know guys that'll go through different colors and, and that kind of thing and two-tone them and do all kinds of whatever, but, uh, I don't know. It seems like most days if they're just not going to eat this one, then they're not going to eat any one. I've never really noticed a huge difference between changing colors. <clears throat> Especially when I'm moving it, sometimes static uh, may make a little more of a difference. But I kind of feel like when I'm moving it, it uh, doesn't matter. <clears throat> Same thing, hotspot collar. Glue the sucker and yeah. Those, whoever gets them, are going to catch fish this fall. <clears throat> just a blob. Yep, just a blob, bud. <clears throat> when in doubt, blob it out. Kyle knows. Uh, okay, so that's the blob. Not a big secret fly, but um, it's if I had to pick just four, I'd kind of be crazy not to have one. So um, let's do a leech next. And I think I've tied a handful of dub leeches on here. Uh, the black ice dub leech is one of my favorites, but um, this. Where's my thread? There it is. 
<clears throat> there it is, see? Everybody uh, fishes blobs. Do you fish fabs? Um, yes, I do. They, uh, if you scroll through the feed, you'll see pictures of sunburst versions. Uh, and I use both yellow and white foam for those ones. Uh, okay, so let me just throw another hook in. So now I've switched to a 1760. Um, <clears throat> you can, uh, it's a little, it's better. Uh, you can tie this, untying this in a kind of a maroon variation. Um, black is probably the one I fish most, uh, but black, maroon, olive, red, all very good colors of the UV straggle or brill and marabou. <clears throat> so for anybody that was coming, uh, looking for fancy flies, I, uh, sorry to disappoint, but as usual, our stuff is pretty simple. What's up, Troy? How you doing, buddy? Yes, it is my Friday. Kinda. I gotta work a few hours in the morning, but uh, I should be fishing before lunchtime. Now, marabou. Uh, I don't chintz out on my marabou. When I buy it, I'll look at a few different packs, and you can find some with really nice fluffy fibers. And that's kind of what I like for my leeches. So I get rid of the bottom uh kind of the shit stuff and then i'm left with this so i'll tie basically yeah probably three or four leeches out of this so i'll take this section here for one this section here for another and then i'll chop this tip out up here i'll do it right now just so you can see just come in on the stem and just pluck it out of there and then i can pinch all this end fibers together and get a third uh, leech there but that's kind of how I dissect and get the most out of these uh, plumes. <clears throat> so, just peel the marabou back. And again, there's no flash in the tail or anything like that. You can certainly do whatever you want to this stuff. If you feel like adding flash, add some pearl in there or whatever you want to do. Um, but I just take the marabou, tuck it right in behind the bead, wrap it back, throw a couple wraps to prop that tail up. You can leave that tail pretty long. That's a little longer than I like. Try to keep it somewhat straggly. That looks pretty good. Just tear that in different pieces. It's still a little bit long, I think. There we go. So about a body, body and a half, you know, a body and a half kind of thing. <clears throat> um, it's like, you know, why a gunmetal flashaboo chronomid over an ASB chronomid, right? I mean, they look the same. It's just one of those things. Just to say you're fishing something different. This is probably the best answer I got for you on that one. I imagine they have their own unique action. Uh, the way the booby's going to dive versus the way the fab is is probably the booby's a little bit more erratic. But what does that make a difference? I'm not sure. <clears throat> All right. And then we've got the 5 millimeter uh, UV Brill from Techstream. So again, black, olive, red, maroon. Those are my favorite colors of this stuff. But just marabou, it, and a hook and a bead is it. Very, very simple. But same thing with this stuff. Make sure you give it a few wraps, and then you can see I cranked on that pretty good there. Um, <clears throat> but just setting your material makes a big difference to your the durability on your flies. Tight thread wraps 
and <coughs> tape material wraps. Bada bing, bada boom. Yeah, cheers, Devin. <clears throat> Yeah, well, we haven't quite got there yet, so um, we're going to tie a damsel. And I know people say, well, why would you tie a leech and a damsel? Um, <clears throat> yes, Textream Brill. Uh, why would you tie a leech and a damsel? And it's, it's a confidence thing. It's, a, you know, it's an experience thing. It's... You know, this stuff works, so um, although you might be able to double up and sneak something else in there, um, you know, it's not easy to outfish uh, this, especially in the black. Um, I mean, the olive, yeah, you could get away that they might take that as a damsel for sure, but um, the damsel we're going to tie is somewhat realistic, so um, it's, a, it's a gooder. All right, I'm going to tie one more of those real quick. <clears throat> you can get uh, the Brill at either Canadian Llama or uh, Chinook Wind Outfitters. Five millimeter. <clears throat> it is deadly stuff in the colors I mentioned. <clears throat> And so easy, like, you could do either or. I've caught fish moving it, and I've caught fish uh, with it under a bobber, but you're, um, I would say I tend to fish it more under a bobber, but I only really move leeches if, if there's no wind or fish really want something moving that day. Probably 70-ish percent of my leech fishing is done under a bobber, 80 maybe. <clears throat> Yeah, so the vampire is very similar to this, except the the material used on the vampire is a little bit longer. Um, but yeah, it's basically the same thing in a little bit of a tighter material. So that pinched off a little more, or a little tighter than I like it. I like it to be a little bit jagged. So if you just come in and kind of pick it apart a little bit, it, uh, when it tapers off in the water, it'll uh, under a bobber without being balanced. Yeah, believe it or not, uh, I don't uh, fish balanced uh, leeches. And... Uh, have yet to be outfished by one when fishing a leech like this, for instance. <clears throat> okay, where did my bro go? There it is. And you can get away. This is a size 12, 1760. It's probably my most common leech size. But you can tie these little um, leeches with this brill down, right down to 16s if you want to. It's pretty uh, versatile. And they're super quick ties. They're durable flies. And, uh, yeah. I mean, there's... Don't get me wrong. There's flies out there that I do not go fishing without. Things like boatmen. And a lot of people mention boatmen in the fall. And, um, you know, there's just certain uh, things. But, you know, it's... Catching a boatman fall when they're really on them and is pretty rare um, these days. And uh, so it's just, you know, if I only had four, I'm not gonna pick one that's gonna be, uh, you know, it's like having having adult uh, caddis with you during late spring, early summer, right? You always have them with you, but you'll probably rarely actually use them. Uh, so it's just, yeah, one of those. Uh, all right, that's the leech. Now, change up the bead color you can uh i rock pretty much my leeches are like uh 90 percent 
that chartreuse or orange. Um, but yeah, that's that's the only uh, only um, ones I use on those. And then I forgot to mention with the blobs, if you're not using tungsten beads, then use some uh, lead or lead-free wire wraps around your bead. The heavier those things are, the easier they are to fish with. Uh, if they're not weighted or just you're just using a brass bead, if you watch how long it takes those things to sink, even when they get wet, it's kind of painful. Uh, so, <clears throat> uh, okay, what's next? Let's rock a blood worm next. This is an oldie but a goodie. Um, so this is a blood worm and not a lot of people said blood worm. Um, so I was a little bit surprised at that, honestly, all these super productive, uh, chronomid lakes that Kamloops has, they don't get, uh, cronies without a ton of blood worms. So it's just one thing to remember is and trout love them we post uh we post pictures uh pretty regularly throughout the fall of fish stuffed with them so summer right through to fall um any giveaways tonight really need to yeah you got to learn how to catch them up before flies are going to help you bud hook set got to practice <laughs> um all right i'm going to change the thread again so this one uh, you can tie in red and or olive. Uh, tonight I'm going to tie up a couple olive ones. <clears throat> now the beauty about a if I only had to have just four and why I'm picking a blood worm is because if fish happen to be on crawnies and I only had four patterns, I'm going to want something that's that profile. And this thing is. So if you had this in maroon and um, this olive and red, then it's one pattern. And um, you can probably fool them into uh, eating it if they're on chronomids. So uh, now this is a size 12 this is on the big size the big end of things um not always i mean you can do eights but for regular size i would have to say you're we're, you're going to want to be in that um uh, this 12 down to a 16 or 18 <clears throat> and so whatever the color i'm doing i'll go opposite with the wire so on a this one here i'm using red wire even though it's a it's a um, olive bug, so it kind of just gives it that two-tone effect. I'm tying it in at the end, and then I just pull that wire till it's even with the bead. The back of the bead, and then just wrap that up. Keep it along the near side. With my blood worms, I don't like I don't taper them at all. So you notice I went all the way down, I caught the wire at the end, and then I came all the way back up. Um, <clears throat> what's the best fly for a creek that you can't physically see fish, but you know are in there? Uh, I'm a still water guy, bro, sorry. Not the best guy to give creek advice, uh, but probably a little nymph that's heavy enough to get down uh, whatever you're fishing. <clears throat> That's the best uh, advice I got on that one. All right, so now I'm going to grab um, four strands of olive crystal flash. Obviously, if you're doing red, you're going to get red and so on and so forth. <clears throat> and then I'm going to take two of them.
and just capture them with the majority of them hanging out the front here. And again, this is just to keep my profile the same. So this is a bit of a pain in the ass because that other piece wants to kind of come with you, but just do some wraps and then get it out of the way. And I'm keeping these two on top and then just taking them back to where I tied the wire in. And we'll just give one wrap there, like so. And then I'm gonna fold this back, capture that, and bring it all the way back up. So I'm gonna have a super smooth and untapered body. Kinda of see what I got going on there? Yeah. <clears throat> All right, so now, where did my damn two pieces go? Killing me here. There we go. All right, so we want those two chilling out the back. And then we're going to take these other ones and just wrap, touch and turns, all the way up the hook. This stuff is super kind of delicate to work with. I'm a bit of a bull moose in a china shop. And uh, if you stretch this stuff too much, it goes all goofy on you. So just go easy when you're wrapping it. And you can see the flash this has. One thing that doesn't hurt to do in the fall is throw a little bit more flash at them. That's what we do anyways. And uh, flashy typically wins in the fall. Uh, all right. Um, how come I don't post these videos anymore on your Instagram? Uh, I don't know. I'm a bit of an idiot. So even the ones that I, when I finish, I always have a tendency to hit the, this button and the button that I hit makes them disappear. So... It's kind of my fault, but uh, this one I can probably post. Uh, okay, so now I'm just going to grab this wire. And you're not going for any specific amount or anything like that. Just nice, even wraps up the body. Tie off your wire. This green is a pretty sick color. It's super hard to see, uh, but it's this olive crystal flash. And uh, yeah. So now we'll just whip finish. Just like so. So the red rib, the fly takes on quite a bit of, uh, quite a bit of red with that red rib. And then I'm just going to come back here and just nip those off. So we just got that little bit of two tails kind of hanging out there, chilling. And although you can't see it with a shit, uh, that's how you tie the KFC. <clears throat> and you can see how. You've got, although it's slightly different, if they happen to be on cronies and you only had four flies, you have something that if they're on crons, they'd probably eat. So, all right, spin up one more of those quick. And uh, the material was olive crystal flash. And uh, I use extra small uh, red wire. <clears throat> And then what? See? Can't even keep track of my damn wire. If Sam's in here, that's Sam's fault. Talking about 2 and 25. 
You're not allowed to talk about that, Sam. You did that in my boat. <clears throat> What's the hook size? So you want to tie them from a uh, 12 down to about a uh, 18. If you don't tie 18s, then short tie a short tie yourself a 16 or something but you'll want to have them small for sure wire wants to keep going over to the other side Just pull it back all right <clears throat> uh, the bead go one size <clears throat> so it'll depend what hook you're uh what size hook you're on, but uh, a little trick that I do with my blood worms is I undersize my bead uh, by one size. So on a hook where I'd normally use a 7 64ths, I'm going to use a, <clears throat> a 3 30 seconds. And so again, blood worms are pretty uniform. They don't have a lot of taper. Um, and <clears throat> because they don't have a lot of taper, um, you want to keep things uh, nice and even. Nice, whipping up. There's all kinds of, can't keep up with this uh, chatter here. There we go. <clears throat> so, same shit, different pile. Keep your uh, crystal flash right out the back. Like so. Fold that one back over. <clears throat> but yeah, if I had a a seven sixty four speed on here right now, it just wouldn't uh, wouldn't look right. I'd have to tie the bug way too thick. In order to, um, oh, I screwed that up. I screwed that right up. <clears throat> Come on. What are we doing here? My first time tying. <clears throat> okay, let's try that again, shall we? Now you do, oh my goodness, I just can't keep hold of that thing. Oh, it's way short, that's why. Okay, we might have a redo on our hands here, folks. I do lots of redos on live streams. This is just I'm trying really hard not to redo this. But it doesn't seem to be agreeing with me. Okay, let's try this again one more time. That shit out the back. enough who saved it just barely Let's get that thing tied off. Ooh, that was a lot of work. How long does the hatch last on this fly you're tying? Um, this one doesn't, 
<clears throat> this one doesn't hatch. This is the larval stage of a chronomid, so. <clears throat> um, I'm trying to keep up with the comments here, guys. Sorry. Uh, so, I think I missed one of these. Yep. So, I'm going to come in here and just get that out of there. When I wrap my wire, I usually grab these two little tails and just pin them with that uh, with that wire, and that'll hold them right in place. And yes, you want to put glue on this stuff. I have been doing more of my glue when I'm done. Uh, tie and everything. I'll sit there and glue it all lately. I don't know why, but I just started doing that. Uh, no, this is a black bead. So I put a black bead on all of them. Um, <clears throat> and bada bing. Trim our little stub there, and that's it. So, again, kind of a shitty light, but simple. Glue that sucker and go to work. All right. Now, last but not least, we've got a, I think I need maybe a bigger hook. Well, I think this should be okay. Yeah, yeah. No, one size big. Oh, I can't. My hooks are covered under you guys. Okay, these are the hooks then. <clears throat> oh, no, they're not. <clears throat> so, the next one is uh, pretty simple. Cheers, bud. Thank you. A whip finish? Is that how that's spo I'm supposed to read that? A whip finish? I like it. Okay. D -d 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 damsel. Damsel fly. All right. We latch her into the old stonfo. And see how this goes. <clears throat> so, um, much like the rest, still simple. You need hook. We're going to use some bead chain eyes. <clears throat> and... Marabou, dubbing. Wow, that was rock star. Whew. Clearly a new beer today. Tangling shit, chopping thread off. See? This is fly tying. Anybody that tells you they never do this shit... They're full of shit. Because I'll tell you, it happens. And you laugh it off, you unwrap, and you redo. Come on. I have way more patience when I know I can save it. <clears throat> All right. Next. Okay, so get a little bit of a base going here. Now, I have people ask me a lot, well, how come you don't put the, the eyes on the bottom? You can put the eyes on the bottom of this fly, but it um, doesn't matter because the way it's tied, whether it rides right side up or right side down, it's going to have the same profile. Oh, boy. I think we just lost some eyes. Uh, yep, 
they gone. We'll hear those uh, hit the floor later. <clears throat> Had a few drinks. No, I don't drink. This is just legit fly time, dude. Uh, the moose, he will probably come over for a visit. He is uh, straight up napping right now. Uh, so anyways, eyes on top or eyes on the bottom uh, does not matter simply because of the profile. So we leave kind of like a hook eye space-ish uh, out front of these eyes. And then everybody's probably got their own little sequ sequence for tying eyes in. I do cross wraps, X wrap, X wrap, X wrap, and then gathering. So, I don't know if you can see that, but I'm going up underneath the eye and then over the hook, under the eye, over the hook, under the eye. And that pulls all those thread wraps together. Uh, so, now I'm just going to wrap back and forth. That's just going to help my marabou from, uh, from slipping. Boom! So I got fluorescent green uh, thread, marabou, and dubbing. Now you can tie this in tan, you can tie it in olive, you can tie it in light olive, you can tie it in this bright fluorescent green. Again, keeping with the trend uh, that we like to do in the fall, this is a little bit more boom and a little bit more in your face, bright. So. <clears throat> um, now you can you don't need a lot of marabou for these tails I like much sparser tails than most especially on damsels so like I don't have a ton there and I want to use as close to the tips of these fibers as I can because those just and move like crazy so just gonna kind of tee that up to where the length I want. And then if you chop it off in your fingers, it comes out nice and even. We tuck it right behind that eye. And then I'll show you. So if you spin your bobbin uh, counterclockwise, <clears throat> when I lift up my thread, see what happens? So that thread is jumping over my fingers so now I can just slowly pull down and I capture all that marabou right in behind and then wrap it back as far as you like probably to about there okay so we've got that now we can come here and I am going to pinch that a little bit short so about body length is all you're looking for for your tails on this stuff all right uh so that's fluorescent green marabou we've got some small bee chain eyes up front now i'm gonna find man where is it this is painful i swear i had some gold wire out but wires on the top bin, so we're good. <clears throat> um, this one, you can fish it a ton of different ways. Walking these is is pretty fun on a naked line. Um, they, uh, if you watch them swim, they're not. They ain't no Olympians by any means. They're not super fast. They kind of just wiggle throughout the water. And and uh, so if you just walk it in on a naked line, it's uh, they can get smacked pretty hard. It's kind of fun. <clears throat> but you can also hang it. Uh, so now we've got the leech dub uh, from Chinook Wind. And this is the, I don't know what they call this, the Sherbert, I believe. And the reason I like this stuff is I can dub a super tight noodle 
and you'll see like the thread buildup that I have there. I've got a little taper going on. That's basically, I'm just going to cover that with a tiny bit of dubbing. <clears throat> so I've got a super tight little dubbing noodle there. And now we're just going to wrap up and just gently start tapering. The thread will kind of do its thing to build that taper. And if you end up not bad, you'll end up right where you need to be. <clears throat> now I'm going to go back to the same crystal flash that I used for the um, for the blood worm, just olive. And I'm going to take four or five strands and I'm just going to tuck them in right behind these eyes. So again, you know, you can see the trend here of bright and flashy. We're pretty firm believers that through the uh, fall, have an extra flash helps to get her done. So that's what you see in a lot of these. <clears throat> all right, so those legs can be kind of all over the place. It doesn't even matter. I totally didn't even wrap my rib. What a fucking noob. All right, <clears throat> so you got to rib the fly. That's the uh, gold wire we tied in. Uh, this will be okay. This is going to help keep that dubbing uh, in place. And we just tie it off right behind the eyes. <clears throat> Moose. Moose, are you napping, bro? It must be. He'll make an appearance. So then I'm just going to pull those to about the, the back of the fly. And move them into place. Those ones got a little bit squirrely over here. Okay, though. That's better. <clears throat> so, we got some buggy little legs, nice little profile, and uh, <clears throat> a little bit more dubbing, and we're done. So, I just use the exact same dub, and same reason, it dubs nice and tight. <clears throat> if you want to pluck it out, you can, but when you can dub it super tight like this, it allows you to shape things and kind of, you can see I shape the body super easy with a bit of a taper. Now I'm gonna do the same thing with the head. So just one or two wraps in behind here to kind of finish off your body. And then we'll start just figure eight wrapping this guy. Oh. Like so. So now <clears throat> we've got killer, little, simple damsel. Let's finish that sucker. <clears throat> and that's all there is to it. So that one really gets an easy button. For what you end up with, it's a pretty cool fly. And uh, it's super easy to tie. Clearly, I don't have much for skills tonight, and I'm still managing to pull it off. So, <clears throat> yeah, that'll be a good one for anybody to try. <clears throat> All these... Flies are on the store too, so if any of you don't tie uh, and you're more into just fishing them, then uh, customtroutflies.ca or flybuys.ca and uh, you can get them there too. There's lots of, lots of uh, choices, it's a pretty easy website to use. <clears throat> 
I run the blooper reel. Everybody screws up. It's all good. Some just give more shits than others. I'm not one of them. <clears throat> all right. So, same deal. Yeah, walking this little thing is is super fun way to fish it. It uh, again the, the movement of the marabou and little flash gets attention, but they smack it. If you got a good breeze, it's uh, I should say unless the fish really want stuff moving, I I use an indicator and in my and the wind. The ripple to my advantage so often is just such a easy, simple way to present things, and it's tough to beat. <clears throat> this is called a double D. Double D, the KFC blob. And the straggle leech brill, whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> Pinch that off about the same. a good starter vice um there's lots of stuff out there um renzetti makes a pretty good vice the dan vice is a pretty good vice for the money especially um those are probably the two that i'm most familiar with all right now did i lose the gold wire now too Walking synonymous with finger to pardon? Don't quite get that one. So same deal when I tie the wire in. I'll give it some wraps up top here. It just starts to build a taper. Yeah, it's going to be. It's okay, see? So I dubbed this noodle, and I can already tell it's way too thick. And that's my own fault. A little bit of my own pickiness, but these bodies, you don't want them to get out of hand. <clears throat> And you, if you want to go through the trouble of stripping your marabou fibers, so some guys will actually strip the bases of the marabou fibers where you tie them in to lessen the amount of bulk that you build. I don't quite go that far with it, but just going easy on your dubbing makes a big difference. in there but let's do our rib first this time so I always counter wrap my or counter rib uh, my flies that use dubbing or uh, pheasant tail or turkey or anything like that any material like that I usually uh, 
<clears throat> Stoneful, yeah, it's a pretty swanky one, this one, I'll tell you. <clears throat> okay, some crystal flash. Pink. So those ones laid out nice. <clears throat> now just build your head and then giddy up. But same thing, keep her sparse. You can see when I held up that other loop, the difference. This is just thin, thin, thin. The other loop was way too thick. So again, finish off your taper for your body. Give it a few wraps. And that is it. There it is, double D. Zynga, there it is. So pretty bulbous head, thin buggy body, super slim, uh, wispy tail. That thing is just gonna crush. And then the legs for it's for looks, but and for uh, the flash factor for sure, right? But yeah, that one turned out. That's the way I like them, right there. So. Lessen the materials as you go down in size. Um, yes, if you get the melt your own bead chain eyes uh, or melt your own mono eyes, you can tie them down in a in like a 16 still. So yeah, I don't hate double D's, not at all. Never seen a pair I didn't like. <clears throat> so that's it. There are four must-haves. Um, I'm probably going to do another one of these in the next two weeks where we dive into a little bit more of the rarer, uh, rarer, rarer, rarer uh, fall stuff like the Boatman. Uh, I think I have a Boatman on the YouTube channel called Brandon's Boatman. I don't know if I ever put it on there, but it's a deadly one. It's in, the, it's in the, our feed as well. You have to dig a little bit deeper for that one, but it's a pretty pretty slick uh, pattern. But um, if you double whip finish, do you have to glue? Yes, you have to glue, 100. <clears throat> and I'm not tying any water boatman, fella. Uh, sorry to disappoint. This round anyways, like I say, maybe I'll get into that on the uh, next one. Um, but... It's time to start fishing again. So, anyhow, um, hey Moose, where are you? Come here. Hey, he is passed out. He went to uh, puppy daycare today, and uh, what are you doing? Come here. Here. Come here, buddy. You gotta come say hi. Are you that sleepy? Come here. Hi. I'm here. <laughs> no, he's not saying hi. He's toast. Uh, we're gonna do a giveaway, right? Yeah, I forgot about that. Uh, could you hold up the first two flies? They're just blobs. <laughs> That's it. Um, all right, let's give them away, shall we? So if you win, uh, send me a message with your name, address, shipping details, that kind of thing. 
and we'll get these flies off in the next little bit. All right, so I'm scrolling, and we're going to stop right about there. So, uh, Cole Young. Cole is the winner. Oh, there he is. He's still chatting down here, too, and he won. Bro, you're a winner, dude. <clears throat> Look at that. We just had enough to finish. Beauty. Uh, so, anyhow, Cole, are you still here? Did you peace out? Yeah, he's still here. All right. He is the winner. Send me a message with your address, dude, and I'll get that uh, these flies, and then I'll uh, cap it off with a couple cronies or something for uh, to make her a full does for you. So appreciate you guys coming out. Thank you. And uh, I'm going to go join uh, Moose and go back to sleep. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Tight lines to you, everybody, this weekend. Take care.